Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. And today I've been having a right old clear up, a sort out, and now I am just cleaning and sanitising and getting ready because it is the 1st of July, which means I'm going to be incredibly busy. I'm getting ready for the weekend and we're going to kick it off with the coffee pot challenge. I'm going to give the coffee tin a shake and for those that don't know or you're just joining in I pull out three prompt cards and on the cards are things within our supplies and then it's those supplies or materials you need to use to make something. You can use the prompts that I pull out or you can refer to your own stash, make a list, put it in your, your own tin and pull out prompts from there. So I'm just going to try and get one from the bottom. There we go. All right, so we've got the three out. and Let me tell you what they are. Today we're going to be making something using words. OK, we've got to use words. We've got to use ephemera. And we need to use scraps. OK, guys, that one looks interesting. OK. I've got a load of scraps in here which I can pull from. I've also found junk mail. I'm going to use that as my starting point. And I'll use some strips from here, just some plain ones. Cover this as quickly as we can using stick glue. So I quite like the scotch glue because it's nice and creamy. It's especially good when working with uh, papers that are fine. And um, let's just go for a bigger bit here. I'm overhanging the paper slightly because it's just easier to cut round at the end and you get a nicer seal. I have got some Yoohoo glue which I want to use. I want to compare that with Pritt Stick. Now Pritt Stick is our UK glue. It's our glue of choice, our leading brand. Nothing wrong with it, completely sticky, very good, very secure, absolutely fine, non-toxic glue which is excellent. We give it to the children to use in their crafts. It's a school glue. It's made of potato starch. It's That doesn't compromise it in any way that probably makes it better potato starch is very very sticky very gloopy uh, what else is made with potato starch glue oh that the um the glue that comes in a tin cocoinia something like that i don't know it's an italian glue that's completely eco-friendly as well comes in a tin with a little brush tracy fox uses it um I wouldn't mind getting a tin of it, but it's really expensive because you have to buy it from Italy. So there's that one. Uh, but I'm, I am using this. It's, uh, it's a non-solvent glue. I haven't had too many problems with it. In fact, it's nice and smooth and creamy and it doesn't do that chunky deposit that I can't stand. So that's quite a thick bit of paper. I won't use that. I'll try and keep it as thin as I can, this project. Uh, how about this one? I just want to cover up the marketing. <laughs> oh well, we'll have to put something over that because it's shining through. Maybe just want one more, one more that fits. Right, I'm, I'm going to cover all of that up now because I need the spine to be covered. So that when it folds... doesn't that's better so when it folds it it folds and then it okay 
book page will cover that up. I'm going to use this. Let's use this. These are sheets that I do where I just stamp off on. If I'm stamping, I will stamp onto the a spare bit, bit of paper or card next to me. And then you can end up with another sheet of paper that is interesting that you can add to a journal or you can use as a tearing sheet or to cover things as we're doing here. So it's just another way of getting more out of your ink and your stamps because you were going to stamp anyway, but that secondary image that will come off can be used as well. So we're just going to do just that now. Cut that down. Right, super. Ephemera, okay. I have got this lovely postcard here and I wondered if that would fit in there, which it does, so that's really quite nice. So I might like something that just holds that in there. I've got some um, photograph corners, which I have... not used before so I'll just wonder whether that would that would work wouldn't it let's put them on all all the corners and then we'll just position it so if you're from the UK these were from the works, they were a pound, I think you saw that. They aren't always in stock. They do white ones and black ones, but it sort of depends what time of year it is to what you can get. Um, maybe have a look on their website first. They don't, as I said, they don't always stock them. Uh, so I'm gonna put that there. It's gonna cover up my seahorse, but then when you take the, that out, you'll see him. Okay, that's the ephemera in position. Bone folder, where's that gone? Oh, right in front of me. There we are. Okay. Oh, yes. I can't work under these sticky conditions. Um, let's keep it simple. We don't need to reinvent the wheel, do we? We just need a focal point and some words. Enjoying. I've really enjoyed using uh, these oxide inks in the last session I did. So I'm going to, uh, that, that uh, video will be coming up, but I just, um, I'm going to use this. Oh, it's here. I've, I didn't, uh, I've put it away where it's supposed to be. Who would have thought? I'm going to, I don't want to uh, have a border, so I'm just going to make sure that the edge comes, comes within the pattern there. Everything's stuck down and it's just so much easier. We just go round in a circular motion. I'm using Distress Oxide Antique Linen. That's Tim Holtz from Ranger. I'm trying not to hit the edge because it will give me a line and don't want that. So now I want to bring this up, bring it over. Bring it down a bit, something there. And then I'll probably end up putting something over the top of it anyway, so I'm not too fast. That looks great. All right, and then you can see that that's got a nice background pattern. It's come out really nicely there. And if I get 
a tissue and just clean off the ink. So it's just a nice creamy, sandy yellow colour, but it's got this oxide component to it, and then it just makes it chalky. Which photo in the oxide and just I'm going to lightly come over there like that and now I want to that's pretty slightly overlap it see what I mean if you don't secure it down just gently go over I'm just going to have a look at these I can't remember if these were the ones I didn't like so I've put them in a pack elsewhere that's quite sweet or maybe these are the ones oh these are the smaller ones that's why they're here that is why they're here I don't like that I like the colour decision made quickly and then I want some words because I'm not happy with my side here but I have got just to be a wee bit more inspirational than a, than a book page, which I might do as well, is I've got this um, fabric which has got newspaper print on it, so those that's my word element coming in there, which I might stick down on that side with a little bit of rip book page. And I'll just check that I haven't got any in here. Yes, I have. But is it long enough? No, it isn't. I've got a very old letter here. Is that too precious? Oh, yes, look at this. Um, so this is a vintage... Uh, no, it's not. It's antique. This is antique um, paper. Antique writing. And uh, it's a legal letter. Uh, retired gardener, something. Anyway, whatever this is, um, uh, insurance by the late something something on life something something. Ninety pounds. It is something something. It's due. It's legal. So there was money due, money owed. But look, they ran out of paper. They didn't have enough paper, so he's having to write down the sides. And I just think that's brilliant. In fact, that's too brilliant, isn't it? I don't want to. I don't want to rip that up. We're, we won't be ripping that up. You can all relax. We're just, just going to cover up the gluey mess here. Jane Austen, Emma. That's going on there. Somehow. Let's just tear it carefully. want because we're dealing with ephemera oh that's pretty why don't I have that that's nice and then we have this here like this so we're using ephemera now I think I just like that and then we want something down the bottom so we want that cut down else what's this another bit of ephemera that's map oh how about that just to finish off yep right let's get gluing let's use something a bit more less sticky, more reliable to just get this project down. Stick glue is okay. It isn't going to last the test of time. You are going to need to invest in stronger glue if you would like all your papers to stay put um, for 
you know, years and years. If this is something for archival purposes you would like to be available for your children in the future, particularly if you're writing down your memories and special things, you have got to get your glue right. You need a acid-free glue. You need to be making sure that you've got a permanent glue and also where's my ink dropper? I might use I don't usually have this one on the desk but I'll, I might use the oxide on this uh, music paper Ooh, it's quite dark it's um, supposed to be softer, really, but that looks like a walnut stain to me. Maybe it's because there's other stuff on here. All right, that's fine. And we'll just glue this down as well. I love this. This is the Art Glitter Glue. It's hugely expensive. Well, it, it needn't be expensive. It's just that it's, it's impossible to get hold of in the UK and, it, and really... <sighs> you know it is a lot of money so it's something that you can again ask as a gift because it's one of those nice items but really if you've ever had the little bottle like that which is the two ounces and you've bought the tip you can put PVA in there and that'd be fine it's, it really is more about the nozzle than anything else that makes it so fantastic for precision gluing so that's coming along now isn't it so we've got our words we've got our ephemera I forgot to stick that down let's peel that up I don't have much time there and we'll just get this this is a whoop, old vintage phone book this is from the very early 90s <laughs> uh, whereas other things I've shown you here have most definitely been antique things so the postcard the postcard is it hasn't got a date or a stamp or anything on the postcard but the the print on it is the color it's it's one step up from a black and white photo when they started to introduce color and they would they would sort of paint it, it paint it so the color's been painted in so it's very special and this is Devon which is lovely because that's where my family are from. And I'll just trim off that using my fabric scissors, which I shouldn't be doing, gunging those up. And then I'm just going to put that on there, I think. And then, so yeah, so I've used three glues on this project. I'm using a fabric glue, Fabri-Tac and uh, art glitter glue which is very very little left and then the scotch glue uh, which is just a standard stick glue. Pritt stick would be fine if you're in the UK. Uh, Elmer's glue absolutely fine. If you can get scotch create the permanent one that's very, very good apparently and um, you know take advice on what is best in your country. And there we go, so we're just relaxing now. We're just putting on the fabric here. I don't want to cover up my music paper. I used to work in a music uh, hall, just uh, volunteering. And they gave me, um, when they were having a clear out, they, uh, the sheet music that was old and tatty that they had in the attic or the loft where they had everything, they were wanting to throw it away. But they were also offering it for crafts as well. And I said, yes, please. So I took a whole load of that and um, well, I'm still using it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to roll that over. So that it comes over on because the back is very underwhelming so I'm just going to put a bit of glue there 
It's quite nice to have a bit of fabric on the spine. This could be lace, uh, fabric or lace or a trim or binding, whatever you have to hand. And I'm just putting a little uh, focal point with these flowers on the front, but that could be a fussy cut from um, a magazine or something that you get through the door. A greeting card if you get them. And uh, I keep those little bits, you never know. We want to get the wipe back for the table because that's gone back to square one. Let's put a bit of ink on that. I want my little ladybird there, I think. Yes, I do, ladybird. So this was clusters that I was making um, on a master board. Uh, the link for that is in um, my playlist. It'll be under... Mm, gosh, what will it be under? Probably master boards. <laughs> Definitely collage, paper collage, I should think. I'll leave the link below for that. And then, whoops. This is a Tim Holtz die cut. I need him to come over. Got a little bit of time to move. But I just uh, want to be able to see here. Yeah, that's better. So it's a postcard holder. That's interesting. I think the other thing to do, if you're having a, if you are reviving that whole process of sending a postcard to a loved one you either make your own now or, or buy something from a place you're visiting that'd be quite fun to take with you uh, so you can put the postcards in you'll have to make them bigger perhaps and then what you could have here is maybe you could have um, some paper here to write down sort of note down what you want to say or note down the addresses of people and then some stamps in there. We'll do some words up there because that looks a bit blank, doesn't it? And then maybe we want a little pocket here using something. It's quite fun using the ephemera. It really does sort of take you to that era and... Uh, wonderful nostalgia really good so I might want that just want so I know what I've got this was just had a bit of extra strength to it so we're going to put that down okay I might want it that way up yes that's great and then we'll just put uh, what should we do let's do the this again because this is brilliant I'm liking this. Might go this way with it. And just get the... Let's do the dark colour. And then... We will also do the lighter colour over the top. And that gives me that. And I'll just ink round the edge just to finish that off. This was just a scrap, came off one of the journal making sessions. I'm going to put that there with a little dimple using my circle punch. I'm just going to have a look. What do I think is centre? 
punch that out and then just ink in that little dip divot there. That's great. And then I'm just going to glue that on just on all three sides, leaving the top open for interesting things that you might want to add on your travels, on your weekend away, perhaps where you're writing your postcard from. You might have come across some other ephemera bits that you would like to hang on to, or you might want to put your notes in there of who you're going to write to. Or maybe you just want that memory of where you went. I always like to do that. I like to collect a postcard of where I've been. I don't send it to anyone. I just keep it for myself. But that's quite a nice thing to do, isn't it? In fact, I did go on holiday recently and I did just do that. So this is quite a nice way to protect the postcard because they are obviously are collectible in the future, especially as we are now not seeing postcards as much. Uh, it's not the done thing to send a postcard. It's uh, There's a revival of snail mail, of course, but... Most people just send a text message, don't they, and be done with it, or a picture message. We've got all of that now, so why would we want to send something that arrives um, <laughs> way after we have? Okay, so we'll just finish this last bit off here with a word or a quote or a saying or something from over here in my little packs. Something that denotes travel, because we are dealing with a postcode. Postcode, we're dealing with a postcard and a black one I think will be great. And if Tim Holtz can't help me with his lovely beveled edged words, I've got these ones here, which I don't know where they came from. Oh, here we are. Life was meant for great adventure. Perfect. Let's have that. So that sorts that out. This came from Junk Journal Sentiment Stickers uh, from Judy Craft. So I had a pack of it. I don't know where I got those. Probably eBay. I'll have a look and see if I can find a link for you. But otherwise, I'm going to put that up there. That's nice. There we are. So it's a bit haphazard the way I've made it because I'm making it up as I go. I'm trying to be fast for a video. I'm trying to think and create and talk. Um, so the yes, it can look a bit messy. It's certainly not how I would do it if I sat down quietly craft without the camera on me. Um, but I think the result is interesting. I think, you know, that could be perfectly lovely and useful and uh, something could go in there like a nice bookmark or a ticket for wherever it is this person is heading on their travels and I hope that you have found that this has been inspirational and you'd like to have a go at the coffee pot challenge we are uh, going to be doing these every Friday for the foreseeable. I've got lots of things coming up. I'm helping uh, with a collaboration that will be my big um, collaboration project is coming out on the 7th with um, a new kit that's been brought out by Rach and Bella Crafts. So that's coming out. I should be making something fun using that. That's on Thursday the 7th, which is an unscheduled a day for me so that's bonus for you guys and uh, I hope that you'll join me and have a little look at that and see what you think and um, yep above all else guys just slow down and make crafting time for you bye bye now <laughs>